is about him. This is the nature of human being, being selfish. We pray mostly not for the same reason Amir al-Mu'mineen used to pray. We pray either afraid from the fire of hell or wanting the heaven and the success in the day of judgment. When we talk about the purpose of creation, we talk about the verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون I only created jinn and mankind to, to worship me. And يعبدون in the tafasir, they say يعبدون means يعرفون, to know me. The know, knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like a chain. When you see a metallic chain, a normal metallic chain, the more thick you buy it, the thicker it is, the stronger it is. The more you protect it from rust, the more time it will serve you. See that space you find in one chain sometimes when, you, when it's not really welded very well and you try to pull something very heavy with it, it will cut with time. If you want to buy a good chain, you try to buy one that's welded very well. There are a lot of common points between this metallic chain and the chain that we are supposed to have in order to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like when we recite the dua, Allahumma arrifni nafsak, fa in lam tu'arrifni nafsak, lam a'rif rasulak. Oh Allah, guide me to know you, because if I don't know you, I won't know your messenger. Oh Allah, guide me to know your messenger, because if I don't know your messenger, I won't know your proof on earth. Oh Allah, guide me to know your proof on earth, because if I don't, I will be deviated from my religion. The proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth, who are they? Ahlul Bayt salawatullahi wa sallam. And Sayyid al-Zahra is hujja min hujjaj Allahi ala al-ard. It's one of, the, one of the proofs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put on earth. So in order to fulfill our purpose of our creation, in order to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haqq al-ma'rifah, we have to know the status of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. To know who this lady really is. And in order to know her, we have to know her haq. In order to know her haq, we have to defend her. We have to uh, weep for whatever saddened her. We have her to know. We have to be happy whenever she is happy. Shi'atuna minna yafrahuna li farahina wa yahzanuna li huznina. So tonight, I will try to answer some questions that are brought up every time we reach this occasion. And... Unfortunately, we used to use these answers to answer people from other sects, from other religion, who tried to doubt the tragedy of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. Unfortunately, we now have to answer it to people from our sect. Not just that, we need it for the next generation. The, this generation that is being affected by these people. These, re, these questions are creating misconceptions. These people that are embarrassed to talk about Sayyidah Zahra sallallahu wa sallam alayha. The best proof is the movie that's coming up, The Lady of Heaven. Not taken into consideration the people who funded it and how the scholars, they oppose a lot of their views. But the, this title, The Lady of Heaven, having this movie that, that was never meant, was, was never made before about the life of Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam, to show history. When it shows his history, since when mentioning history and stating history is against the taqiyya? Books, they are everywhere in the libraries, even that they are forbidden in some countries just because it states the haqq, being, being afraid from the people to follow the haqq. But now it's everywhere online. Those who really need the truth, they can go and look at the books. Those who really need the truth as well, they can look at the history of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra in that movie, for example. But some people, just for the sake of the fake unity, what do they do? They say that you're not allowed to do that. That's haram, for example. That's haram. What do I mean by fake unity? Unity is something that we need, something beneficial. We, are, we as Shia, we are the main people who preach for unity. Because as we are raised by Ahlul Bayt sallallahu wa sallam alayhim, wherever we are, people around us are safe. 
we don't attack others. I'm talking about religious and pious people, those who are really following the Ahlul Bayt sallallahu wa sallam. People around us are safe. Taqiyya, in the opinion of all the maraja, when it affects the aqidah, it becomes haram. When it affects the, haqid the aqidah of, this, of the person who's talking and the people, the next generation, the kids, it becomes haram. But some people, they use it for what? For worldly purposes. Like having the restaurant in the middle of their country. Like political purposes. And this is not the unity that is needed from us. So unfortunately, we have to answer this question for ourselves and for our kids because these misconceptions are always being spoke about around us. Trying to uh, extinguish that, the tragedy of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra. Salawatullahi wa salamu One of the questions that they ask, they say that the event of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra is only an event in history. And it went, what can you change? It doesn't benefit us if we talk about it, it will cause bloodshed. First of all, we have to know that denying a certain event in history or proving it, sometimes it has a very strong connection with aqaid, with our beliefs. And sometimes you cannot separate between them. For example, when you say, for example, a person comes up and says, let us excuse those after the martyrdom of the Prophet sallallahu usurped the leadership. Let, them, let us excuse them. It's just an event in history and nothing, it, it doesn't have effect on the aqidah. In fact, if they didn't, if they obeyed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, like he said in Ghadir Khum that Imam Ali alayhi salam was assigned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of bloodshed would be avoided. A lot of people would be guided. A lot of invasions would have been avoided. A lot of slaves would have been, would have not been enslaved. Because a lot of uh, slaves, when they usurped the leadership, was taken because of invasions that had no legal or uh, permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the hujjah and the proof on the earth. Rasulullah and Imam Ali alayhi salam. So they really don't know when it's permissible for them to make war or like choose to do that type of ways. The history never, never shows that Rasulullah sallallahu invaded or started a war, either defending the religion or defending the country. So when we talk about, even when someone excuses Yazid for murdering, murdering Imam Hussein alayhi salam, would their excuse be acceptable? Of course not because it has a real effect on the aqidah. So when we look spotlight on the tragedy of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam and the tragedy of Ahlul Bayt sallallahu alayhi alayhim, it means that there is an oppressor. And this oppressor, we have to be bari'een minhu. A'lanu al-bara'a. Refuse their acts. Disown the relation to them. Disown them as well. Why? Because you can't love a person and love is an, his enemy at the same time. You can't say that you respect someone and someone that oppresses him and attacks him. You can't love these two people at the same time. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ When you do rukun or like be with or support, not even 1%, even the oppressors, the fire of hell will affect you. And if we say that the tragedy of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra is only an event that happened in history, why did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi cry for it even before it happened? Even all of the imams afterwards. Imam al-Kadhim, when he remembered the narration of Rasulullah, ala inna Fatima, babuha babi, her door is my door, and her hijab is my hijab, he cried for so long, and then he stopped, and then he said, uhutika wallah, Hijab Allah, hutika wallah, hijab Allah. That the hijab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been compromised. He said it twice. So even if we say, if we want to say that history is just history and it has no relation to religion, all of our religion, the, the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, the narrations of the Sahaba, the rulings are derived from it and it's mentioned in the history. 
They said it in their time and we received it through history. Just because it's events in history, we let it go. We have no respect for it and we have no mention mentioning for it. Of course not. So what happened with Sayyidah Zahra is very attached to the beliefs. Why? Because Abu Bakr, as they say in their books, in their books, even that they mention, for example, that it's, they say that it's, it was only threatening when he sent Umar. He said, bring me the allegiance of Amir al-Mu'mineen by force. When he said that and Umar went and brought the bundles of food and put it on the door. And when he said, bring it to me by force, no matter who stands up in front of you. Then they knew that Sayyidah Zahra sallallahu wa sallam, would defend the Imam of her time. Of course, it's very related and connected to our beliefs. Another question would be asked, I won't take so long, I'll try to make it short. Some people would say, even a big scholar from our sect, he says that. He said, there was no door on the house of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. There was a curtain. There was a curtain. First of all, everyone knows the narration of Sadd al-Abwab, Hadith Sadd al-Abwab. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi when he built the mosque in Medina, the masjid in Medina, he built nine houses around and there were there was doors from the house to the mosques directly and another door that leads to the street and to the other side. And then later on, the companions, they built their houses the same way and they made their doors as well and access straight away to the masjid. And then later on in the year three of Hijrah, Rasulullah received the order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seal and close all the doors, but the door of Amir al-Mu'mini ibn Abi Talib. As we recite in Dua Nudba, وَسَدَّ الْأَبْوَابَ إِلَّا بَابَ And then they came, they refused that decision. They, tell, they came to the Prophet, why did you close the doors of all the Sahaba and the other houses? But he left Amir al-Mu'mini. He says, Wallah, not me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let them out and let him in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed their doors and he let his door open. This is the first answer. Another answer, what is the role of a door? What's the real role of this door? If you want to use this door wisely, it has to be covering you from people, covering you from, from thieves, from this stuff. When you want to be wise closing the door, you use all the specification. You not just close it, you even lock it. This is the real purpose of the door. And who is more religious than Ahlul Bayt, than Sayyidina Zahra alayhi salam? Who would accept that his door being exposed to people, anyone can enter through a curtain? Of course, Ahlul Bayt sallallahu wa sallam alayhi they are more overprotective for the religion than others. There wouldn't be a curtain, just a curtain. And even that, why would in their narration, in their saying, bring the bundle of wood, to a curtain, when a small fire can burn the curtain. Why would they bring wood to the door? So why would try to uh, push inside the house or attack the house if they can easily just go inside and bring Imam Ali alayhi salam outside? So these narrations, when, I, when we mention the, in the narration, when he called upon the fire to ignite the door, they say the door in the narration. Then the second one hit the door with his foot and broke it in the narration. The door. Aturaka muharraqan alayya babi. When they say the Zara called upon him, she's like, Are you going to burn my door? And she mentioned the saying of Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam. And of course, this doesn't, this doesn't mean that there wasn't a curtain. There was a curtain. Even there's a narration that says, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told, told one of his women, hide this curtain from me because it has a lot of decorations and this decoration reminds me with the dunya. They used to have the door and then afterwards a curtain. So if the door was open by a kid or like they opened the door for a reason, there would be a curtain that would hide. Another question they would say, why did Sayyidah Zahra alayhi salam answer the men? Isn't she a woman? Why would she come up to the door and answer the men? Isn't she the door of Rasulullah? The, the woman with the best hijab that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. We would say that az didn't go to answer the men. There was an attack on her house. 
they broke into her house. Her hijab doesn't stop her or forbid her from answering from behind the door. This same hijab didn't forbid her or stop her from going to the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and give her sermon. In front of the men, of course, there was a curtain and she was in a group of people, in a group of women. Would that hijab stop her from talking to them? Of course not. So, so she answered them from behind the door just to defend the religion, to defend the imam of her time. Her, she, she's not only the wife of Amir al-Mumini. She's not only the daughter of Rasulullah. She is a Shi'iya. She's a Muwaliya. She's a Hujja, a proof of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. She has a role towards the imam of her time. So the hijab doesn't stop her from saying what's the truth or defending the haqq. So she came to answer them, to tell them, you heard that my father said, Fatima bav'atum minni, she's a piece from me. Whoever harms her, harms me. She thought that if they knew that she's in the house, they would have respect for her. She didn't expect that they would attack their house. Of course, she knew that from before. But to uh, give them the proof, put the proof on them, to prove to them that you are the world followers. You don't really want to obey what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. So what really supports that? That in order to defend her hijab, she took the door and she hid behind the door till Umar saw her hand and hit her with the whip. The narration says, Hatta sara kaddumluj al-muswad. It became a black mark. They would say as well, why Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam doesn't, didn't respond? Inshallah, this will be the final question. So, and we would say, why Sayyidah Zahra was supposed to answer that door? She was supposed to answer that door. They came to take to make, to force Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam to plead allegiance to them. If Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam responded, there would be two solutions. Either he pleads allegiance to their friend, and in this case, he would admit that they, a lot of people, they would think like that. He admitted that he's the rightful heir to the leadership if he gave, if he pled allegiance to him. The second solution, if he stops and he wouldn't do that, they would take him by force. They would affect on him by force. And a lot of people, they wouldn't know the truth. A lot of people, they would not really think, really know what happened at that time. But once say the Zahra alayhi salam stood up, they ruined their, she ruined their plan. So a lot of people, because that was a big tragedy, 300 people from Bani Sulaim came with 18 people, Qumfud and Umar and uh, Abu Ubaidah Jarrah and the rest of them, they came to the house and Khalid ibn al-Walid made sure that these 300 people surround the house in a way that no one can help them. So when that happened, a lot of people, they can, now they saw the truth. And Abu Bakr in the narration, in their book, in the book of Al-Imama and Siyasa, while he was on his deathbed, one of the visitors came to him he said, why are you in that situation? He seemed very afraid. He said, I am, I regret three things. One of these things, he said, I, I regret that I exposed the house of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra alayha as-salam. So when she answered, she ruined the, her, the plan. But they came to the house of Sayyidah Zahra, not respecting. Of course, when people, they claim, that they love Sayyidah Zahra, that's not true. They used the narration that when they came to her house and they said that you are more precious to us than my daughter, they used that to prove that they love her. How would you love someone and attack their house? Just imagine you like someone, you're a friend with someone, you respect him, and you throw a rock on his window and you break it. He comes outside, he tells you, what did, why did you do that? Say, I'm sorry, I like you and I respect you, but I just don't like the shape of your house. I don't like your house. That doesn't make sense. Why, if they like her, if they love her, why would they attack their house? If they love her, why would she refuse to respond the salam on her when they visited her? 
Why would she tell Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam, don't let anyone attend my funeral? Why? Because she died and she's angry at them. Because they did something that no one who's a lover doesn't. They came to the house of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam with the group of people and they ordered to ignite the fire on her door. Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayha. They put the bundles of wood on the door of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra and they ignited the wood. Part of the door was burned, the door was opened, and they attacked the house of Sayyidah Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam. Fatima saw the men became in the heart of her house. She couldn't, she didn't have the chance to go back to her room. She hid behind the door. Riayatan li sitri wa lil hijabi. Umar felt that she was behind the door. He took the chance because he knows that there is no one that supports Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam on that day but her. He took the chance and he said, if we remove Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam from the way, it would be easy for us to take Amir al Mu'mineen. He says in the message that he sent to Muawiyah that Abdullah ibn Umar showed it to Yazid after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He said, when I felt that she was behind the door, I put my foot on the other side of the door and my back on the door and I started to push when I heard her scream. I felt that the Medina became upside down and I never left the door till I heard the ribs of Fatima break. She called four times, four calls Ruhi Fidaha. The first call was, Oh Father, Oh Rasulullah, what did we face? Look what we saw after your absence. Go, Makia, Yaba, Bad Anak, Ajra with Moi, Hargo, Yabab, Babi, O Kesra with Lui. The second call was O Ali, a Haider, Bab, Dar, Tisma, Sarahit, Wani. Her third call was to Fava. She said, Oh, Fadda, take me and let me lean on your chest by the name of Allah. They killed my baby. They killed the fetus in my womb. And the narration says that her fourth call, some of the scholars say that when she was attacked, when she was behind the door, she screamed, Oh son, oh Mahdi, when will you come and avenge me? Yes, this scream will stay till now, has no response till the Imam comes back and Go to the Medina and he will scream, Ya Lithara Jaddati Fatima. Sayyidi, go. Mokhalil Rewayam Nashara. Waslub al Jibtin. Min Fogish Jara. وصيح ظل عمي الزهر كسر من غصب حقها وهاج حزانها وماستا وابا صالح come back and appear holding the standard and crucify the Egyptian on the tree and call who broke the ribs of your mother Fatima and who took her right and who her by the name 
فاطمة الزهراء by her broken ribs by her fetus haste in the reappearance of صاحب العصر والزمان grant us the توفيق to support him and to be of his supporters and his soldiers and to avenge the broken rib of Sayyidah Fatima al-Zahra, cure the illness, the ill, and fulfill our needs in this dunya and the akhirah. Give us the, grant us the tawbah, the tawfiq to, to obey you. O oh Allah, have mercy on those who passed, have mercy on, on, on us as well. Ya amwat al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wa liqadha al-hawaj wa li-shifa al-murda wa li-ta'jil faraj al-mawla sahib al-asr wa al-zaman. رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مسبوقة بالصلاة على محمد وآل محمد